Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor Steve Sanabria, and I'm here for Friday Night Words of Encouragement. Uh, where am I? Well, I'm outside of the Oakdale Fire Protection District, Station 30. I don't know why they say Station 30. We can't have 30 stations. But anyway, that's the number, and we're out here in Valley Home. Valley Home is a little town outside of, uh, outside of Oakdale. It's about three and a half miles from my house, and this is actually the closest fire station. So, if anything ever happens at my house, well, you'll know these folks that come out and visit us. Anyway, even though it's a little town, there's all kinds of cars going by. There's folks fussing and fighting over in a house over there across the street. There's a guy on a Harley Davidson over here at the Valley Home General Store, and so it's actually quite busy. And I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about how busy this world is and how crazy it is. You know, it's kind of interesting. I thought last week that of all the things that were going on, of all the of all the problems we had, I didn't think it could possibly really get that worse without there being a war or something. But then this thing happened with this young man who was killed by the police in Minnesota. All of a sudden now it's just gotten worse and worse and worse and worse. I don't know folks, this world seems to wax worse and it's very discouraging. It's very discouraging. And last week I talked to you about us encouraging ourselves, but today I want to talk about the idea that you and I ought to encourage one another. It's a commandment. Paul told the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11, he said, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. He's leaving it to the church, folks, to, for us to encourage one another and encourage all those who need to be lifted up. And when we think about all the problems we have in this world right now, when we think about how there doesn't seem to be anything positive going on, the problem is, if you and I don't get it right, if we don't get it straight, we're going to fall into that pit of despair. But we need to encourage folks. You see, if you encourage someone else, well then by God, you won't be thinking about your problems. Paul, or excuse me, the writer of Hebrews said this. He said, let us hold fast the confession of your hope without wavering. wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Thank you, Jesus. And let us consider how to stir one another up to love and good works. Not neglecting to meet together is as the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. You know, we've talked about this appearing to be the last days. And the Lord knew there would be discouraging times that would come at, the, at that time. The enemy is trying to discourage us so that we won't stay faithful in this final push towards seeing the Lord. And so he said, you know what? Stir one another up those times. Stir one another up. Stir up the gift that is in you. Amen. And the question for you and me is, how are we going to do this? How could we possibly stir one another up? Well, let me give you the first idea. The first idea is this. Paul told the Ephesians in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, he said, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up, as it fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those that hear. Folks, the fact of the matter is, is you and I, we need to make sure that what comes out of our mouth is not corrupt. And that goes well beyond uh, no, no, and not cursing, no curse words. But Paul is talking about things that spoil. And you know, if you got a little bit of spoiled milk, all you need to do is put it in that fresh gallon of, of clear milk, of good milk, and you're going to spoil the whole bunch. And so the, the Lord is trying to tell us Paul, that if we're going to encourage others, let's not let all the, all the nonsense that comes out of our mouths come out. If we have a pessimistic spirit, well, you and I ought not to be pessimistic, or at least not let that come out. 
because that's just going to bring others down. He goes on to say in 1 Peter, not him, but, but Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8, he says, above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers the multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. You know, you and I, we have to purpose in our hearts and purpose in our minds to love other people. People are going to disappoint you every day. And the people who are going to disappoint you the most are the ones in whom you have the most hope invested. Because you have further to fall. But God says you've got to love them regardless. Listen, if you want to know the biggest lesson I have learned as a pastor in my 10 years of pastoring is that you have to love people. If anybody's listening to this message right now who wants to be a pastor, let me tell you, if you don't love people, don't become a pastor. Because people need bringing up. People need bringing up out of the muck and the mire. People need a lift in life. And I'm not talking about empty words or, hey, you know, you're a great guy. But they need a word from God. And you can't give them a word if you don't love them. You cannot give them any encouragement in the Lord if you do not love them. Jesus could not have done what he did if he didn't love them. And so if we're going to be like Jesus, that's the biggest trait we need to copy from him. We need to love people. And so Paul or Peter says, love earnestly. That means love truly. Not, I love you, brother. And then move on. He says, you got to love them earnestly. So here he says, let no corrupting talk come out. Love people earnestly. And let me give you just a third thing bear one another's burden. Paul said it very clearly to the Galatians in chapter 6 and verse 2. He said, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another's burdens. What does that mean? Help them move? Offer to lend out your truck when people need to move their house? I don't think that's what he's talking about. But it, that's helpful. No, Paul told us in Romans chapter 12 and verse 15. He said, rejoice with them that do rejoice. And weep with them that weep. You see, that's what a true friend does. A friend weeps with the one who weeps. I remember hearing a story about a young man whose fiance left him three days before the wedding. And he said that every year on that anniversary, he has a friend who calls him up and tells him a joke. And I don't recommend this, but he said he sends him an inappropriate picture. But you understand what I'm saying. He said his friend calls him up and cheers him up every year and reminds him of the bullet that he dodged. You don't know where you might be if you got everything you asked for. If everything was soft, you wouldn't know. And so that's where we come in as friends. We, we lift up and we bear one another's burdens for all of our friends who have problems. And so Paul said, listen, by doing that, you fulfill the law of Christ. And what is the reward? Well, the book of Ecclesiastes tells us. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9. It says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. If they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has another not to has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man prevail against one who is alone, Two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not easily broken. You see, Solomon was trying to get us to understand that when two are together, you, it's very difficult to stand against those two.
when you are alone in your problems, you know what I suggest? You go find someone else who has a problem and you lift them up. And in doing that, not only will you stop the enemy from knocking them down, but the Lord will strengthen you. Not only will you be fulfilling the law of Christ for someone else, you'll be doing it for yourself. And listen, you'll start to feel the hand of God in your life. This isn't about just getting through things, but it's about feeling the hand of God working for you. Not like your bellboy, not like somebody who's do, taking care of your luggage, but as somebody who moves in a supernatural way, and in doing so shows you that he's real, that he cares, that what he did for us didn't end 2,000 years ago, although that was enough. No, it continues to this day. And because it continues to this day, my goodness, you can still depend on Jesus. Folks, we're going to find ourselves here pretty soon going back to church. And when we go back to church, I'm afraid that we've idealized it to the point where we're just going to be in church and we're going to go, yes, all of our problems are over. Then the second wave is going to come. I want you to realize that you and I are going through this together in Jesus. And you know what? You need to go find somebody to do this together with. You need to lift somebody up. And even as you do, God will lift you up. Good night. And you know what? We're going to get through this. God bless you. And have a great weekend in Jesus' name. We'll see you on Sunday about 11 o'clock. 11 or 12. We'll let you know.